Dabbler Trail from Stitch in Heaven coming to you from beautiful East Texas. It's summertime here. It's beautiful outside. And we're going to make a really neat quilt from the camper trailer pattern by Amy Bradley. We run this uh, quilt as a block of the month program. And we have a group on Facebook for all of our block of the month programs that I monitor. And a lot of times we get comments or questions on that group about actually fusing the pieces down and also sewing the pieces down. So we're gonna do like a two part video here. This first part I'm gonna show you about fusing it down and then we'll do another video about the sewing of it. All right, well let's get started. This is the quilt that we're gonna be working on. Uh, it is classic Amy Bradley. And this block right here is the block that we're gonna be working on. It just happens to be block one. There's a few things that you need to do this with. It's just really a lot of fun, a lot of creativity goes into this, and you're gonna just um, feel real good about your finished product when you're finished with it. A couple of things that you're gonna need, I like to use this Fusamat, uh, Fusamat is what it's called, it's by Sharon Bradley. There's a couple of these on the market, um, they're all good. The point of using a mat like this, an applique pressing sheet is what this is called, is you're going to build your applique on the pressing sheet, take it off as one unit, and then transfer it to your background. So you have less chance of ruining your background fabric that way. The nice thing about this is that your pattern will show through just like it does here. Now, so to have one of these mats is really, really nice. You're also probably gonna need some glue based it. This Roxanne's glue based it is what I use. Um, just because sometimes the fusible doesn't stick to the fabric. And when that happens, you need to kind of tack it down with glue based it. You're gonna need a little mini iron. I use this Clover mini iron for this. I've had this forever. It's rusted, it's got fusible on it, but this is my go-to uh, iron for this type of work. It's very small and I like it because it's small. So to get started, I'm gonna point out to you that Amy's patterns are really great because she walks you through step-by-step step what you need to do. She actually numbers these according to the way or the, the, the order in which you need to, to lay them down. Now, I have gone ahead and I have taken the, the backing off of this, um, these pieces just to save some time so I've got these already ready to go, and I'm gonna show you in a minute a little trick about laying these down. But you'll say this green piece is piece number one. You can also go by your, your pattern picture here to help you with this. So I'm gonna start with, with um, number one, and she also has dotted lines, and those dotted lines are telling you that your applique piece needs to come up that far. So I'm gonna put this here on number one. And that's gonna just kinda, it, it's kinda tacky. So it sticks there really nice. And you're gonna need to just make sure this comes all the way over to the edge. All right. All right. Then I can peek under here and I can see that number two is this little guy right here. Now I'm gonna show you a trick right off the bat here. When you get these applique uh, laser cut pieces, there's gonna be some of them that are gonna have several pieces on one little piece of fabric. So instead of cutting the tabs off of these to cut these apart and then taking the paper off, what you wanna do is to take this paper off all at once. And to do that, you're gonna just score this with a, pen, with a pen. And then that cuts the paper. And then you take the paper and you peel it back. Okay, just like that. And you peel it off for the whole thing. Does that make sense? Then you're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna clip the tabs that hold those little pieces to that piece of fabric. 
So there's the piece we need right there for piece number two. And we're going to go ahead and do this piece because we're going to use it later on. Actually, I think this is piece number three. So we'll use this next. Okay, so we're going to just clip that just like that. And <clears throat> then we're going to go by this pattern. And we're going to lift this up and we're going to see that this goes about right here. Now, I said about, you know, this is something that's not precision. So you just put this close enough. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a little bit. It's going to work out just fine. So this goes right here. Also, a good thing to have is a pair of scissors. You can take those and you can put them where you want them. All right, number three piece is right here. And that is right here. So I'm going to take this one and put it right here. Number three is next. <clears throat> I have to apologize. I went on a trip last week and I came home with a cold. All right, the next piece, again, I haven't taken off the paper. I wanted to show you how you can score this. You just score the paper right here with your pen and then you lift this off. Now, you need to make sure when you do this, you guys, that the fusible stays on the fabric and it doesn't come off on the paper. If you're not careful, the fusible can stay on the paper and you don't want that. You want that fusible on your fabric. So we're going to cut this like this. You see it has little tabs. So I'm gonna clip that tab. And then this is number four. So I'm gonna put that right there on number four. So you see the way this works, number three goes under number four. That's the reason Amy um, <clears throat> numbers these this way for us. Then I have a little orange circle right here that I'm gonna use later. So I'm going to put that aside. Okay. Then number five, number five is the main body of this little camper. So I'm going to put this on here and I'm going to put it here in such a way that it, <clears throat> there's dotted lines here that show me how far down this needs to go. And this needs to cover number three and number four. Okay, and if it's a little bit off, that's okay. Once you're finished with this, you're not going to really be able to tell. So, that's number five. Number six is the bottom of the trailer. So, I've got that cut out already. And what we're going to do on that is we're going to take it... And again, take it down to, there's little dotted lines here that show you how far down to go with it. Take it down to your little dotted lines. And this will go on top of your white piece. And just make it to where it looks good and, and fits is what you want to do. So I'm going to pull that over. I want it to fit on the edges. And then I also want it to fit with my ground piece here. Aha, now, this little guy here needs to go, I think, he's gonna have a, a, a pot that's gonna come over him. And so we need to make sure that that's there so we can put that little pot later. All right. Now, there comes a point that you can't see this anymore, and you have to move it to your background and then start working from the top. I'm not quite there yet. What I want to do is I want to put these little windows on here because I can still see those through my 
um, through my drawing. One goes there, one goes there, one goes here, and then the small one. All right, so I'm going to put those next. Now, also, I can still see my flag. So I'm going to go ahead and put those on here. I'm going to put as many things on here that I can so that when I start moving this over to my background, I have as much of this down as I can have down. So I'm going to put that one there, put this one here. <clears throat> this there, and then this last one. Okay, let's see here. According to my little drawing I'm going by now, I can put this because I know there's going to be a home sweet home sign right here, and I could go ahead and put that on here. Alright, so you see I'm putting as much of this down as I can. Now this fusible is trying to come away, but that's okay because it's sticky. Um, and you know what? I might as well go ahead and put the tire on. The tire's here, and that little bucket that I was talking about that we needed to make sure we get on there is right there. All right, so I kind of got this here. Now I'm going to take my, um, oh wait, a doorknob. I'm going to have a doorknob right there. And I think I just about got all of my pieces down, except for this little grass. Why don't we go ahead and put that on there too? Can put the grass there and there's a bunch of little leaves you can just kind of do this however you want um you know you don't have to go by the pattern exactly this is certainly something that you know you can do or not do so we'll put a couple of little leaves on there okay i am ready to press this down and what i'm going to do is i'm going to press it um, to this fusomat, okay? So I'm going to go and I'm going to press all of these. Now, while I'm pressing this, I want to talk to you about fusible webbing. When you do this, if you don't use a pre-cut, pre-fused kit like this one is, you will, ooh, that, that moved. I want that right there. <laughs> you know what? That goes actually up here. I don't know that it matters, but anyway, if you don't use a pre-cut, pre-fused kit like this, guys, you're going to be cutting all of this out on your own, and you're going to um, use your fusible web, and whatever fusible web you end up choosing to use, please, please make sure that you read the instruction on what temperature that fusible web will um, tolerate. Fusible web, if you get it too hot, some of it absolutely will not stick. And, you know, you can't, you know, you get in the middle of it, you can't figure out why it didn't stick, and by golly, it's because your iron was too hot. Um, all right. Ouch! This is not sticking. There we go. Alrighty, there's that. Okay. Alright, I'm going to try to pick this up. I'm using, I'm kind of going fast here to try to to help us get through this. And I'm just gonna see if this is fused down enough for me to 
put on our background piece. So I have the background piece prepared. And I'm gonna move that out of the way, take the background piece, <clears throat> and we're gonna take this piece that we've done on the fusomat, and we're gonna peel it up and we're gonna try to get this to come off in one piece. Here, let me put this back down here so you can see. Okay, see, these things haven't, haven't adhered, so we'll have to go back and put some glue on them. But the main pieces should come up, and then on little pieces like this, you wanna use your tweezers to get them up. Okay, that one's not gonna cooperate. And then this side will come up as one unit. All right. And then we just take this and we're gonna move it over to our background. All right, so that's just gonna come like this, all righty? stay behind that's okay we can put that down these little guys all right those are good and our little our little canopy and our little okay this I lost the fusible on so what I would do with this is take my glue here and I would glue this. Like I said, I like to use Roxanne's glue. Uh, there's a number of different products out there that you can probably use, but Roxanne's is my favorite. <clears throat> and so we're gonna put that right there to go underneath this canopy. All right, then once it's on your background, you're gonna press it with a hot iron and you're ready for sewing. So I hope, I hope that helps you and I hope you've enjoyed this lesson as much as I have. If you wanna see the part about sewing, you can look for it uh, on another YouTube video. So subscribe to our channel and we'll see you later. I'm Deb Trail with Stitch in Heaven.